Hello everybody and welcome to another YouTube video. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how we can use Python to automate Excel. Specifically, I'll be showing you how we can load an Excel workbook, how we can create a new one, how we can modify the sheet names and select what sheet we're working on, how we can look at the different cell values, how we can create new cell values, how we can style different cells, merge cells, and a lot of the just kind of common operations you want to do in Excel. Now, there's quite literally thousands of different things you can do with the module I'm going to show you how to use here. Obviously, I won't be covering it all. The point of this is just to get you up and running as fast as possible and show you kind of the most common and core operations that you need to know. Last thing I'll mention here, everything that you can do in Python in terms of like writing the code to automate Excel, you can do that manually in Excel. The reason you would do something like this is so that you can automate the creation of new workbooks or you can kind of search in workbooks for certain values or maybe you have an Excel sheet and you want to read in that information into Python and do something with that. Anyways, you guys know your own use cases. Just wanted to tell you that anything you can do here, you can do manually inside of Excel. So with that said, let's get started after a quick word from our sponsor. Thanks to Career Karma for sponsoring this video. Career Karma is a platform that helps connect learners like you to amazing boot camps and courses that help you get job ready for careers in tech. I actually know some of the founders of this platform and have had the privilege of chatting with them about growing the program and community and helping people jumpstart their careers in tech. If you're looking to be a web developer, data scientist, UX or UI designer, whatever it is, Career Karma can help you get into some great boot camps. Boot camps are really a great way to get hands on experience, and a lot of them are actually very flexible and don't charge you anything until you get a job. You can join live audio rooms on the Career Karma app to speak with coaches and mentors who just got their first tech job. You can download the Career Karma mobile app for free or check them out from the link in the description. To help you get started, the first 1,000 of my subscribers will get a free career coaching session with a Career Karma coach. Thanks again to Career Karma for sponsoring this video. So the first thing we need to do when we want to start working with Excel and Python is we need to install a Python module called OpenPyXL. Now I'm going to assume you already have Python installed on your system. If you do, then what you need to do is open up terminal or command prompt, uh, depending on the operating system you're on, and type the following command. You're going to type pip install and then open PyXL. Go ahead and press enter, and that should install the module that you need. You can see for me, it's already installed. Now, if for some reason, this doesn't work for you. Specifically, if you're on Mac, try the command pip3 install open PyXL, Linux as well, try pip3. Uh, if pip3 doesn't work, then what you can do is try Python hyphen M, pip install open PyXL. And if that doesn't work, you can try Python3 hyphen M pip install open Pi Excel. If none of those work for you, you're getting errors or it's saying this command doesn't exist or something, then I'll leave two videos in the description that you can click on one for Windows, one for Mac slash Linux that will show you how to fix this command. Anyways, I'm going to assume at this point in time that you have now installed open Pi Excel. So now we're just going to make sure our installation is working. So open up some text editor, doesn't matter what you're using. I'm going to use sublime text for this video and try to import open Pi Excel. Now, before I do this, I'll just quickly note my kind of directory structure here. So I'm inside of a folder that I've opened up in Sublime Text. This is on my desktop. Inside of here, I have an Excel spreadsheet called grades.xlsx. I have my tutorial.py file. This is kind of a cheat sheet I'm looking at on my right monitor. I have my working.py file, which is the one I'm going to work in. And then this is kind of a temporary file that's created when I open this spreadsheet inside of Excel. Anyways, don't worry about that, but just notice that all of my spreadsheets are in the same directory as my Python files. That's important, and I'll discuss why in a second. Regardless, though, you need to run this file now once you have import.openpyxl, obviously in a .py file. I'm going to run this and notice that I get finished. There was no error that popped up, and that means that all was good. Now, if this doesn't work, make sure you're using the correct Python interpreter and make sure, again, that you've installed openpyxl. So now that PyXL is installed, what I'm going to do is import something called workbook, which we need to use to open an existing workbook. So I'm going to say from and then open PyXL. And actually what I'm going to do is import two things. The first thing is workbook. The second is I got to look at my cheat sheet here, load underscore workbook. OK, so these are two things that we are going to use to either create a new workbook or to load an existing workbook. 
So the first thing you need to do whenever you're using this module is you need to instantiate a workbook. Now, again, that workbook can be a brand new one or it can be one that already exists. So what I'm going to do here is say WB standing for workbook is equal to and then I'm going to load an existing workbook. So lo load workbook like that. And then I need to put the path to the file of the workbook that I want to load. So since this file is in the same directory as my Python script, I just need to put the name of the file. So I can say grades.xlsx. Now it's worth noting that this module here only works with Python or sorry, not Python Excel spreadsheets that are version 10 or above. So I believe that's like the 2010 version of Excel or above. And so the file extension must be this. You cannot use the file extension XLSV, uh, which I think some people have. Uh, I'm not quite sure about that, but just make sure the extension is XLSX. Otherwise you will get an error. OK, so just a quick note here. Again, the reason I can load it just this way is because uh, that's the name of the file. It's in the same directory. If I created a new folder here, so maybe I made a folder. Uh, no, I don't want to delete the folder. I want to make a new folder, make a new folder and just call it test. And I put a spreadsheet inside of here. Then what I would have to do is test slash grades dot X L S X. Uh, you're typing the path from wherever your Python script is. Now, if for some reason this script was not in the same directory or any subdirectories within the current directory of the Python script, you would just type the absolute complete path to it. So something on Windows like C colon slash and then, you know, users slash Tim slash desktop slash Python, whatever slash and then wherever the workbook was. But here again, this is in the same directory so I can access it with grades.xlsx. Now what I'm going to do is just close this because you cannot open a workbook if it's already open in Excel, you will get a problem. And so now I'm going to run this and you're going to see that I don't get a problem. All is good, which means we were able to load this workbook. Now what I'm going to show you is how we can get the sheets from a workbook. So this workbook right here only has one sheet. But obviously, uh, Excel workbooks can have multiple sheets. And so you need to decide what sheet you're using and modify that sheet. So I'm going to say WS standing for worksheet is equal to WB, which is our workbook now that we've loaded in dot active. Now, what this gives me is the active worksheet from this workbook. So now if I print WS and I run this, you're going to see that we get worksheet. It's called grades. There you go. OK, so now that we have that, what I'm going to do is show you how we can access cell values from this worksheet. So let me actually just open up Excel again. Uh, and let's see. OK, let's open up grades and notice that here uh, we have some student names and we have their grades. So the first thing I'll show you is kind of how we can access an individual cell value. Let's start with a one to do that is really straightforward. You can simply print out the worksheet at and then a one. Now, when you do this, it's going to give you a cell. And then if you want to actually look at the value of this cell, you have to say dot value. If you look at this, it will give you the value, which in this case is name. So actually lied. Sorry, when you're opening an existing workbook, uh, you can open one while it's open in Excel. What I meant to say is that you cannot modify the existing workbook while it's open in Excel. Uh, at least I'm pretty sure I think you'll probably get an error if you try to do that. Regardless, what you can see here is that it says name. Obviously, the value at a one is name. And so this is working just fine. So now if I want to look at the value at a two, of course, I could just change this to a two. And then you can see we get the value jump. So there you go. That's as easy as it is to actually look at the value of a cell uh, in a workbook. Now, if you wanted to change the value, what you could say is WS at and then something like a two. And then you could say dot value is equal to and then change it to whatever you want. So in this case, maybe I'll change this to test. So if I do this uh, now, when I run this, you'll actually see. OK, it finished that it did not change in Excel. The reason it didn't change in Excel is because I did not save this workbook. So if I do make a change here, I need to save this workbook manually to a file name before it will actually take effect. And so what I can do to save the workbook is WB dot save and then the name of the file. I want to save this too. So I can say grades dot XLSX. Now you'll see what happens here when I try to save this. When I run this and I try to save it, notice we get an error. Now I can't see exactly what the error is. Let's say right here uh, doesn't quite say, but the problem is that this file is already open and so I can't save to a file that's already open. So I need to close this. So I'm going to close that and then I'm going to try. And now you can see that it actually does work. So now I've saved to grades XLSX. If I open up Excel, and I look at grades, we can see that we've changed this name here to be test uh, in uh, what do you call it? A two. 
So there you go. That's kind of the basics of opening and loading a workbook. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is show you some operations related to sheets. So what I've done is I've created a few new sheets here inside of this Excel file. So grade sheet one, sheet two, and sheet three. Now I'm going to show you how we can get these other sheets because right now I'm just showing you how to get the active sheet. And obviously sometimes you want to access different sheets or maybe even create new sheets in a workbook. I'll show you how to do all of that. First thing to mention here, though, is that I kind of lied when I said that you had to use dot value to assign a value to a cell. You can actually just do WS at a two is equal to the value that will work as well. However, when you are accessing, you do need to use dot value. OK, so now what I'll show you how to do is get different sheets. So the first thing we can do here, and let me get rid of the save command is we can print all of the sheets in a workbook. So I can say WB dot and then sheet names like that. And what this will do is show me all of the sheets. You can see we have grades, sheet one, sheet two, and sheet three. Now, if I want to access a specific sheet, what I can do is say WB and then use this kind of uh, syntax right here and inside put the name of the sheet I want. In this case, maybe sheet one. And when I do that, you're going to see it gives me the worksheet named sheet one. So that's how you access different worksheets. I would then say WS is equal to if I didn't want the active sheet say sheet one. And that would mean now I'm doing all of my modifications or accessing with WS on sheet one. Now you can create new sheets as well. So to create a new sheet, what you can do is use the function which is called create sheet. Just had to look at my cheat sheet there. So I can say WB create underscore sheet. I can say maybe we'll call this test. And then what I can do is print out all of the sheet names to make sure this worked. So WB dot sheet names. So let's run this. And we can see that now we have another sheet named test. Now, of course, that's not going to update in here unless we actually save this workbook, which I'm not doing right now. I just wanted to show you how you can work with and access the different sheets. All right. So I've cleared the screen. We're now going to create a brand new workbook. And then what we're going to do is write in a bunch of cells and some information just so you can see how that works. So to create a new workbook, what you can do is say WB is equal to workbook. This now initialized a new workbook. Now we need to get the worksheet. So we're going to say WS is equal to WB dot active. This will just give us kind of the default sheet that's created whenever you create a workbook. By default, there's always one. Now let's change the title of the sheet. So I'm going to say dot title is equal to data. And now what I'm going to do is start writing in some information. So of course, what I could do is go, you know, WS at a one is equal to and then WS at and you know, B one is equal to but that's not very efficient. And well, I don't really want to do that. That's going to take a really long time. So instead, there's a few useful commands that we can use to insert a lot of data at once, specifically rows of data. So of course, you can assign values like I was showing you there. But what you can also say is WS dot append and you can append a Python list of information. So in this case, I'll just say Tim is great. And then we'll do an exclamation point like that and we'll just keep the quotes consistent. So if I do this now and now I decide to save the workbook, so WB dot save, I need to give it a name. Let's give it Tim dot XLSX and I run this. You're going to see all is good here. And now if I go to open this worksheet or workbook, I'm going to keep mixing up those names. Let's go browse. Let's open up Tim. You can see we have Tim is great exclamation point in the uh, kind of corresponding rows. So that's appending, meaning adding to the end of the worksheet. So if I go here and I append this a few times and we can just kind of change this maybe to be like end just so that we can see the difference here. Now, if I close this and I rerun this, so I've just saved the document again. Let's go file. Let's open browse. Let's open Tim. OK, we can see that we've added four rows of data. And then the last thing that we added right is end. And so that's going to be the last row in our spreadsheet. So this is just appending to the end of the workbook. Now, if I were to open this existing workbook and append, it would add to the end of the existing data that is there. But since we're creating a new workbook every time here, um, kind of that's why what's happening is happening. We only have five lines every time because well, we're initializing a brand new workbook and then overriding the existing one that's already created. OK, so now that we know how to append rows of information to our Excel spreadsheet, 
what I'm going to do is show you how we can kind of loop through different cells in the spreadsheet. So rather than actually just appending a bunch of them, I'll show you how we can access and at the same time, if we wanted to modify different cell values in a specific range. Now, this example here, I'm going to show you how we can loop through different rows and columns. This is kind of just general Python knowledge. You can do this in any way that you want. Uh, but I just want to show this to you in case you're unaware of how to do this. So let's say instead of creating a new workbook, I actually want to open the one that I just created. So I'm going to have this function now load workbook and I'm going to load in. What do we call this? Tim dot X X L S X. OK, so now we won't uh, bother changing the title. What we will do, though, is we'll loop through this uh, this cell data. So to do this, I'm going to say for I in range. And actually, let's make this better. Let's say for row in range. And I'm going to loop in range one to eleven. Now, what this really means is I want to look at row one through ten because eleven is the end of the range. And so we won't consider row eleven. We'll start at row one. We'll go up to ten and then we'll stop as soon as we're done row ten. Then what I want to do is pick what columns I want to loop through. So if you go here, right, all of the rows are numeric, all of the columns are letters. And so I need to pick how many columns. Now, in this case, I'm going to say four and we'll say call in range. And I just want to loop through four columns. So I'm going to start at one and I'm going to go to five. OK, so now what I want to do is I actually want to get kind of the cell reference for this row and for this column. So I have my row in this for loop. I have a nested for loop doing the columns. But this nested for loop for the columns is giving me an integer one through four. It's not giving me A, B, C or D. So how do I get it so that every time I get inside of this for loop here, I have something like A2, A3, A4, so on and so forth. Right. And then, you know, B2, B3, B4, because essentially what's going to happen here is for every row, we're going to loop through all of the columns that we want. And when we need to get kind of these unique identifiers. So to do that, we can actually use a function here, which will give us the kind of character that's represented by the column that we have. Now, we can do this manually. The manual way would be to say char is equal to and then char of 65 plus call. Now, what this does is gives us the character represented by an integer. Now, 65 represents the integer uppercase A. And so actually, we would then have to change this range to be 0, 4, because 65 plus call 0 would be A. 65 plus call 1 would be B. 65 plus call 2 would be capital C, and so on and so forth. That's what this function char does. It takes some integer and gives us the uh, character representation of it. Just so happens that 65 is uppercase A. And then you can kind of go on from there, and you can figure out what the rest of the letters are. Anyways, that's the manual way. Now, if we didn't want to do that manually, what we could do is use the function from this open PyXL function, which is the following. So this function is called get column letter. And the way you use it is get underscore column underscore letter. You need to import it from open PyXL. And actually, it's not just from open PyXL, it's from something else. So I'm going to copy this line. I'm going to say from open PyXL dot and then this is utils. I'm going to import get underscore column underscore letter. And then what this function does is take an integer between one and 26 and gives you the uh, character representation of it. So one obviously being a uh, and then I mean, you guys know the rest. So now if I change this range to one and five and I get the column letter of call, this will give me the character represented by whatever this column number is. So now what I can do is I can print out all of the different cell values by doing the following thing. I can say print and then I can say WS at and then I need to kind of combine this character with this row. And there is a function in OpenPyXL that does this, but I find it's easier just to do it manually. So what I'm going to do is say char plus string of row. So what this will do is give me whatever the character is. So A, B, C, blah, 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 plus and then whatever the row is. So one, two, three, four, all the way up until 10. So this should give me all of the values that are in this Excel spreadsheet. And I don't want to save this. Let's run this and let's see what we get. So notice we get a bunch of cells. So we get A1, B1, C1, D1, A2, B2, 3, C2, so on and so forth. But we have not looked at the value. So sorry, I have to do dot value here. And then this will actually give us what the value is. So in this case, you can see we have Tim is great. Tim is great. Tim is great. And then a bunch of nuns because, well, obviously nothing is in all of those other cells that we looked at. Now, if I change this workbook to be grades and we run this, you're going to see we get some different data. So uh, what is grades empty? I guess we must have accidentally cleared grades for some reason. So I guess there's nothing in there. Uh, but anyways, you get the idea. <laughs> this does work. I guess grades uh, we, we must have emptied somehow or maybe because it's open. Oh, yeah, it is empty. Uh, or are we not looking at the right sheet in grades or something? 
you know what? I don't know exactly why grades isn't working, but for some reason, I think we're on the wrong sheet. And so it wasn't giving us the wrong information. Okay, so regardless, that works. That's how you can kind of loop through the different values in an Excel worksheet. You can loop through the rows and the columns in this kind of fashion here using this nested for loop structure. You can get the column letter by importing that from OpenPy Excel. And then you can do this kind of combination of combining the character with the row. And then that will actually allow you to access all of those different cells. And of course, we could change these cells as well. In fact, maybe we should do that. Let's say WS and then char plus string row is equal to and let's just make this equal to to, um, actually, we can make it equal to this itself, WS or char plus string row, uh, just so we can see how this works. So let's run this. We do need to save this worksheet or our workbook. So wb.save and let's save this tim.xxlsx. We now need to close Tim. Okay, so close that and let's run. Do we get any problems here? No, it looks like everything is good. And now if I go and open this, so file, let's open Tim, you can see that we're getting kind of their corresponding positions in the cells. And so that does indeed work. Okay, so next thing I'll show you here is how we can merge cells together. And then after that, I'm going to show you kind of a in-depth example of how we can write some data into an Excel spreadsheet and style the cells and all of that fun stuff. Okay, so merging cells is actually really easy to do. All you have to do is say WS dot merge underscore cells. And then what you need to do is pass a range of cells that you want to merge. So in this case, I could pass a one, two, and then I guess we would do D four or sorry, D one. And this would then merge the cells from a one to D one. So just like you would do in Excel when you're kind of typing out a range, it's the exact same thing here. When you're merging cells, you pick the range of the cells you want to merge. And then, well, it will merge them. So let me make sure Tim is closed. It is. So let's run this and let's see if we get any issues. Looks like everything is good. So now if I go file open and we open Tim, you can see that we've merged these cells together and it kept the data from the first cell, got rid of the data from the rest of the cells. Now, let me close this to unmerge cells is kind of the just opposite of what I showed you here. We can say WS dot and then un merge underscore cells and then the range of the cells you want to unmerge. So a one to D one. I think that's correct. Yes, it is. So let's run this now. And all is good. If we go here and we go file and we open Tim, we can see that we have now unmerged those cells, but we did lose the data that was in them previously. Obviously, we have no way of getting that back. Now you could do this to like say D2 and then it would actually merge um, kind of like a square region rather than just like one row or sorry, rectangular region, but it would be more than one row. So let's just try this merge cells A1 to D2. OK, now if we go file and open and we open Tim, you can see that now it merged kind of the first two rows together. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is show you how we can copy and move portions of the worksheet. I will also show you how we can insert empty rows and delete rows. So let me get rid of this merge cells. First thing I'll do is show you how we actually insert an empty row. This is really easy. You can say WS dot insert, and then you can insert this at whatever position you want. So let's say I want to insert a row at uh, position seven. This means we're going to insert an empty row after row seven. So we could do this twice. And now if I uh, make sure Tim is closed, it is and I run this. OK. Oh, what's the problem here? WS dot insert uh, worksheet object has no attribute insert. Oh, sorry. This is insert underscore rows. That's my bad. Insert underscore rows. OK, so now let's try this. And OK, that's all good. So now we can open so file, open Tim and notice that we have kind of two blank rows now here because we inserted them. now in the same way we can delete rows. We can say WS dot delete rows and we could delete at row seven. So let's see what happens now if we close Tim and we try to do this. OK, no problem. Let's go file and let's open Tim. And now you can see we deleted one of those empty rows. OK, so in the same way that we could insert rows, we can also insert columns. So I can say WS dot and then insert underscore calls. I can pass to this the column at which after I want to insert an empty column. So I could say B and then oops, didn't mean to do that. If I uh, run this, we can see we're getting a problem here. What is it saying? A string object cannot be interpreted as an integer. OK, so that means that instead of passing B, we would need to pass two. I wasn't sure if this took in a string or it took in the integer. And so rather than giving it, you know, A, B, C, D, you would give it one, two, three. So let's give it two. When we do this, OK, all is good. So let's go file. Let's open and let's open Tim. And then notice that we inserted this empty column here uh, in column B. 
Awesome. And sorry, I guess I was saying after this column, it inserts it. Sorry, it inserts at that column. That's my bad. Okay. Now that we've inserted the call, we can do the same thing. We can delete it. So we could say delete calls uh, and we can delete two. So let's close this and let's run this. Okay. Now if we go file and we open Tim, we can see that empty column is now gone and it shifted all of those other columns after. Now we're sorry, back to where they were before. Okay, so now what we can do is we can actually shift a range of cells. So let's say we want to take all of the cells in maybe the C and the D column, and we want to move those over to be an E and F. Well, to do that is pretty straightforward. We can use the function move underscore range. Now move underscore range takes a range. And so I guess the range that we would have here would be C1 to D11. So we're going to say C1 to D11. And then we need to uh, pick how many columns over and how many rows over we want to move it by. So I can say rows equals, and then I can move this, say, up one row. To do that, I would say negative one. That means go up one. If I made this two, this would move it down two rows. So let's actually leave it at two. And then for columns, same thing. If I wanted to move it to the left, I would say, you know, negative two to move it over two columns. If I wanted to move it to the right, I would just put a positive number for the number of columns to the right. I wanted to move it. So in this case, we'll just do rows two, calls two. Let's save that. Let's close Tim. Let's rerun. Uh, we don't get any problems. That's great. Let's open this again. And then notice that we've kind of shifted this over and moved that range of cells. All right, so that's all I had to show you for kind of the core operations. Now we're going to bring all of this stuff together, and I'm going to show you how we can write some data into kind of a new Excel spreadsheet. All right, so I've just pasted a bunch of data here. You can see it says data. I have a bunch of names. These are the names I was using in that grades spreadsheet that you saw. I'm going to show you how we can create that grade spreadsheet. So if you look at this here, you can see we have bolded names. We have all the names here. We have all of the grades, and then we computed the averages of all of these grades down here. I'm going to show you exactly how we can create this using simply Python code. And so if you want to take this code, I will leave a link to it in the description. It should be a GitHub repository. And while well, it's going to have all of this data that you can copy and all of the finished code as well. So we're going to keep these imports up here. However, I am going to import one more thing that we're going to use to actually style our cells. I'm going to say from open dot styles import font. And I'll show you how we can use this kind of font object to modify and make, you know, bold and italic cells and change the color and all of that. Okay, so we have all of this data. And again, what I want to do is write it into the spreadsheet. So the first thing I need to do is write kind of the headings, right? So we had name. Uh, actually, I guess I can just show you. Let, let's look at it here. Uh, name, math, science, English, gym, uh, all of that. So if we want to write all of the headings, well, first we need to actually create a new workbook. So I'm going to say WB is equal to workbook. I'm going to say uh, WS is equal to WB dot active. And then let's change the name. So WS dot title is equal to great. Awesome. So now that we have the worksheet, let's write in our headings. So I'm going to say headings is equal to a list, and this is going to be name. And then I want to get all of the different subjects here. So rather than manually writing out these subjects, what I'm going to do is kind of grab them from my data. So I'm going to say data, and then this is going to be at Joe. I'm just picking an arbitrary student. So I'm picking Joe. I could pick Bill, Tim, whatever I want. And I'm going to get all of these keys here that are uh, inside of this dictionary stored by Joe. So I'm going to say data at Joe dot and then keys. Now I'm going to convert this to a list. So I'm going to say, uh, oops, no, this is not exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, we're going to do this name and then plus data at Joe dot keys. We'll see if that works. But what this should do is combine this list with the list returned of all of the keys that are inside of Joe. So that should give us math, science, English and J. Okay, so now we have our headings. So let's append this into the work uh, worksheet. I'm going to say WS dot append and I will append headings. And now that I have all of my headings, I want to start adding all of my students. So I want to loop through all of my students here and I want to well add them into the workbook. So I want to have their name and I want to have uh, all of the different grades that they have for each subject. So to do this, I am going to say um, let's go for person in data. And then we're going to say that their grades are equal to, and then this is going to be data at person. Now what I'm going to do is get all of the values here. So I'm going to say grades is equal to data at person dot values. So what this gives me is instead of all of the keys, which would be math, science, English, and gym, gives me all the values to so 65, 78, 98, and 89. Now what I'm going to do is say WS dot append. And I'm going to append the name of the person, which in this case is going to be person 
plus and then their grades. So what I will end up writing and we can look at this as an example is whatever the person's name is and then all of their grades will come after in all of the subsequent rows. Okay, so let's test this first before we go any further. So let's save this workbook WB dot save and let's save this as new grades dot XLSX. Okay, let me just close Tim. We don't need that anymore. Let's run this and let's see if we get any problems. And we says we do get a problem concatenate can only concatenate list, not dict keys. And so what that means is we need to convert this to a list. It's not just my bad. Uh, I guess this is not a list type by default, but we can convert it to a list by doing that. And then we're probably going to have the same issue here with values. So let's do that again and make this a list. OK, so now that we've done that, let's run. And there we go. We don't get any issues. Let's now open this file. So file open browse and new grades. OK, so there you go. We can see we have name, math, science, English, gym. We have all of the names and we have all of the grades in the correct categories. Awesome. And let me make sure this is in the correct category. 100, 100, 160. OK, 30, 25, 45, 100. OK, I'm satisfied. Looks good. OK, so now that we have that, what I want to do is calculate the average of all of these grades. So really of all of these columns. Now, the columns that I want to calculate the average for is oops, that's the wrong document here is column B, C, D and E. And so what I'm going to do is set up a for loop. I'm going to say four and we'll say call in range. And then this will be in range two because we want to start at column B and this will go to and then rather than doing this statically by just typing in the number six, uh, I will actually type in uh, what is it? A, a dynamic thing that gives me the number of subjects that are here. So I'm going to say two and this is going to be the len of and this will be uh, data at Joe. I'm just picking Joe because that's going to give me all of the subjects here. And then I will add two to this. The reason I'm adding two to this is since we're starting at column two, I want to go whatever many subjects we have more than column two. And so I add two to that at the end. And what this will give me is four plus two, it should be six. So my range will be two, six, which means we'll do two, three, four and five. And if we look here, that's correct. Two, three, four, five. Awesome. So now that I have that, what I'm going to do is kind of use what I did previously. I'm going to say that the char is equal to and then do we have this imported? Yes, we do get column letter. I'm going to get the column letter and this is going to be from call. And then I'm going to add that to whatever the row number is. Now, the row number is going to be a static number. That row that we're going to be inserting this in is seven. And so what I will say is WS at char plus and I guess I don't have to do string. I can just do seven. So this will give us, you know, uh, B7, C7, D7, E7, so on is equal to. And then I want to put a formula. Now, the formula I want is the sum. So I'm going to say this is equal to the sum. And then I need to put in the range of the values that I actually want to sum together. So this is where it gets a little bit complicated. I'm going to use something called an F string, which I'll explain in one second. But let me just type all of this out first uh, and then I will kind of explain what I'm doing. So I'm going to say F string of equals sum. And then I am going to do what should this be? This should be char plus and then in single quotes, this would be two. And then this is going to be char plus in single quotes six. And then this is going to be divided by and then this would be the number of students that we have. And so this would be the len of data. OK, so I know this is a little bit confusing because I just did a lot here. So an F string is something you can use in Python version 3.6 and above. If you don't have 3.6 or above, this won't work. But what this allows you to do is actually evaluate an expression by putting it inside of curly braces. So these curly braces here will be converted automatically to a string. So the char, which is going to be whatever column I'm in, plus two. So this would be, you know, B2 and then colon to B6. So this is a range B2 to B6 is an example of something that would be here. And then I'm dividing that. So whatever the sum of all of those values is by the number of students that I have, which is represented by the length of my data, which in this case is five. And so what that's going to give me is the equation of, you know, like B2 to B6 divided by five and then C2 to C6 divided by five and so on and so forth. And so anyways, I think that's actually good. Now, if I save this and I make sure that new grades is closed and then I run this, we should be good. I don't think we're going to get any problems. So now let me open this. Let me go file open and let's open new grades. And now notice that we're getting all of our averages calculated here, right? So we can see that this is equal to sum of B2 colon B6 over five. 
right? And then we have sum of C2 colon C6 over five, sum of D2 colon D6 over five, so on and so forth. Now I did this kind of statically by typing two and typing six. I could change this to be more by more dynamic by using the length of the data and the number of subjects and all of that. But for now, I'm just going to keep it simple so that we don't spend too much time. Anyways, there you go. We've just added now the, all of the averages. The last thing I want to show you is how we can actually kind of style our cells. Now, I won't get into this too much, but I'll show you uh, kind of simply how we can just make our cells bold. So if I want to actually make all of my headings bold, I need to do the following. So I'm going to do a for loop here. And what I'm going to do is loop through the very first row in my Excel spreadsheet. and I'm going to make every single one of those cells bold. Now, unfortunately, due to a limitation of the file type of XLSX, you cannot modify an entire row or column style from Python. You need to modify every single individual cell. So it'd be a lot easier if I could say, you know, row one, make it all bold. I can't do that. Instead, I have to go through every cell in row one and make every cell in row one bold if that's what I wanted to do. And so I'll show you how we can do that. But we've kind of been doing it already. I'm going to say four and we're actually going to say call in range. And then the range is going to be one, two. And then I guess how many uh, columns do we have here? I'm just going to manually type it in. We have one, two, three, four, five. So we will go up to six. So I'm going to say four call in range one, six. I'm going to say WS at and we're going to say a and then this is going to be or sorry, this shouldn't be a this is actually going to be get column letter. So I'm going to say get column letter of call and then we're going to add and we'll simply add the string one. So this is giving us, you know, A, B, C, D, so on and so forth. And then we're looking at the first row for every single one of those columns. And we're going to say dot style or sorry, dot font, my bad, is equal to. And then we're going to say font. Remember that I imported font up here from openpyxl.styles. And then we're going to say bold is equal to true. Now, there's a ton of other styles here as well. What this is going to do is just change the font style to be equal to a font that is bold. Now, this will use the default font. You could change the actual font too. I'm just leaving the font default, but I'm changing it to be the bold version, right? And then I could change the color as well and say color is equal to. And then there's a whole bunch of different options. I'm going to refer you to the documentation if you want to do that. And in fact, I have the documentation open here. I'll leave a link to it in the description. But if I go to uh, where is styles here? I think there's something for uh, changing the styles, working with styles. Uh, you can see here that there's like all kinds of colors we can change. So let me just copy one of these. Uh, let's find one that's like a, a nicer looking, make it like a blue or something. I'll copy one of these uh, colors here and I'll show you what it looks like if we use this. So if I change that to be 0099 CCFF, uh, this should then change the style of our cell. So let me make sure that new grade is closed. Let's run this. See if we get any issues. Looks like we're all good. And now I can go to Excel and I can go and open and let's open new grades. And now notice we've changed the color of all of these values here and we've made them bold. All right. So I think with that, that is going to wrap up this video. Hopefully this gave you a general idea of how to work with Excel and Python. As I mentioned, there is this documentation here, which just has so much more information that I can provide you in this video. I just wanted to give you guys something so you could get started. You know how to open something, knew how to you know read cell data, write cell data. And well, anyways, again, I hope you found this useful. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel. and I will see you in another YouTube video.